is teleportation possible? Well, the short answer to that question is yes. In fact, it's already been done, but more on that later. When we narrow down the question to, is teleportation possible for large objects, and what about humans, things get a little more interesting. Due to the length of the content, this sci-fi will be told in two parts. In the first video, which you're watching now, we will answer the questions, what do we already know about teleportation, and have there been any successful experiments? In part two, we will answer the questions, is it likely we will ever be able to harness the technology for large objects and everyday use? Could it ever work for humans? And what are the predictions made by scientists on the possible future of teleportation? Before we start, remember to give this video a thumbs up. And if you're new here, subscribe for more science and science fiction based videos. What do we already know about teleportation? Let's start this one by getting a little more specific when it comes to what we physically mean by teleportation. When we boil it down, there are three types of teleportation methods. The first being when an object or person completely disappears, then reappears in a different place. Think apparition in Harry Potter. The second is when an object or person transports particle by particle through some sort of machine and ends up in another place. Think Star Trek. And the third is the one where scientists have actually made some significant strides, and is likely the only real way teleportation is physically possible. The simplest way to describe it is scanning the object or person, then sending the information to another place, and having the information create a genuine copy of the original, molecule by molecule. Before we dive into that, let's acknowledge that as of now in science, there is no way to replicate the Harry Potter or Star Trek forms of teleportation. But as I said, scientists have made significant strides in the third type of teleportation. So how does it work? It all starts with the simple concept of quantum entanglement, also referred to as spooky action at a distance by one Albert Einstein. By the way, I lied, the concept is in no way simple, but let's see if we can bring it down to an understandable level. Think of two particles as twins, and despite how much distance is between them, they will always be twins. The particles share an extremely strange and, as of now, unexplainable bond. As long as you know the information about one, you can know the information about the other. Again, this is regardless of the amount of distance between the two. Look at it like this. The twins are more like arch enemies. Whatever one is doing, the other is doing the exact opposite. Scientists measure this in terms of spin. If one particle is spinning up, then we automatically know that the other particle is spinning down. This can also get a little more in depth. For instance, if we knew one was spinning up and to the right, we would also know that the other would be spinning down and to the left. But here is where things get tricky. When observed, quantum particles change, and when unobserved, they are simultaneously in all possible states, which is referred to as a superposition. While this fact can prove a challenge for scientists when trying to measure the particle's properties, it can also be very useful in a strange way. We'll get to that a bit later in the video. Scientists found a way to get around this problem by adding a third particle to the mix and indirectly measuring them together. In simple terms, the sender adds particle one into a box with a third particle. Then the sender can indirectly observe these particles and learn some information, but not all the information about the particles. This is called a bell measurement. While the sender still doesn't have all the information because they can't look directly at the particles, they will still have enough information to achieve some very complicated algebra. Then the sender can send this information to the receiver. Once the receiver has this information, they too can prepare some complicated algebra, but they still need one vital piece of information, the actual state of the first particle which means the sender will now look, still indirectly, at the particle and send that piece of information to the receiver. Through this process and some more complicated math, the second particle will then take on the state of the first particle. Now, this doesn't exactly sound like teleportation, but let's say the first particle is actually a group of particles that make up, say, a banana. The information that is being teleported to the jumbled and tangled particles would be the makeup of the banana. So, once those particles take on the state of that banana, it would technically be teleported. But why wouldn't it just be a copy? Well, during the process, the banana on the sending end would turn into a giant pile of particles that are the furthest thing from its original form. In other words, it would be completely destroyed. 
So this is basically the science behind what we know about teleportation. Of course, in the simplest, shortest way possible, I could describe it. But where's the proof? Is this just a theory? Well, that brings us to part two of this video. Have there been any successful experiments? The first successful teleportation experiment was in 1998. Physicists at the California Institute of Technology partnered with two European groups and proved the teleportation theory as described by IBM possible. They managed to successfully teleport a photon, which, as most of you know, is a particle of energy that carries light. This experiment teleported the photon just one meter in distance, but as we discussed earlier, the theory should work regardless of the distance between the entangled particles. Well, in 2004, the distance of a successful teleportation increased to 600 meters, then a few years later to 16 kilometers, then 97 kilometers, and as of 2017, in perhaps the most impressive feat for quantum teleportation, Chinese scientists managed to teleport the quantum state of a photon from Tibet to a specially designed quantum satellite in orbit around the Earth for a distance of 1,400 kilometers or about 870 miles. Again though, if the theory states that teleportation should work regardless of distance, then why did it take us so long to get that far? And why is it so impressive? The answer lies in the initial quantum entanglement. Before you can use two particles that are quantumly entangled, you first must entangle them, and then separate them to the two points you wish to teleport them. And getting particle B into space can prove quite a challenge. The Chinese scientists fired a laser beam carrying one end of the entangled particles into space. Sounds easy, right? Well, this is quantum teleportation, so it definitely isn't. Remember earlier when we learned that if an entangled particle is observed, the entanglement is ruined because the particle changes? Well, when sending the particle all the way into orbit, you risk it interacting with objects and particles and therefore breaking the entanglement. To get around this issue, the scientists actually sent out millions of photons, and out of that, only 911 made it to the satellite undisturbed. All in all, the experiment ended up being a success, and there are many examples of successful quantum teleportation. But what does that mean for us? How can we use this technology? And will humans ever be able to teleport with this theory? And that does it for part one of this topic. In part two, we will get to the remaining questions, which are, is it likely we will ever be able to harness the technology for large objects and everyday use? Could it ever work for humans? And what are the predictions made by scientists on the possible future of teleportation? Make sure to stay tuned for the video. There is an application of the technology currently being developed that you may not have expected. Thank you for watching this episode of Sci-Fives. If you liked this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more videos on all things science and science fiction.